When you're down in a cave, how do you know what time it is up above? The clock, so old fashioned. We're gonna talk about daylight sensors. Hello and welcome to OMG Craft. I'm your host, OMG Chad. Today, we're gonna be looking at daylight sensors, one of the interesting redstone blocks that uses analog redstone. <laughs> it's a very, very interesting redstone block, so let's check it out. So, here we are in a tiny little world I made for, oh, it's still loading in. Oh, the squid, they look so happy. So we're gonna be talking about daylight sensors, and the first thing is how to craft them. Pretty simple, you can use glass on top, that first layer, then nether quartz from the nether, and then slabs on the bottom, and you get a daylight sensor. Another nice thing to note is that uh, the slabs and stuff, they, they, they that doesn't matter, so you can get that with, uh, here I have the um, acacia wood, I think it's acacia, uh, and that also makes a daylight sensor as well. Here's what they look like on the ground, and you can hook up some redstone to them, and they will show you what time of day it is. I've, I've decided, see how the sun isn't moving? Just the clouds. Um, I have uh, turned the daylight to, so it doesn't just change on me. Uh, this is its maximum setting of 15 blocks away. You can see this one doesn't have any particles on it at the 16th block. You could put a repeater here and then repeat the signal if you needed to. Um, but 15 blocks is the maximum distance of the daylight sensor. Uh, you can change, uh, let's do time set and uh, let's change this to 5,000. You can see that it'll go down. Uh, uh. It will go down at 4,000. There we go, and we lost one block. Um, this is kind of like a, uh, a curve. This isn't just a perfect straight line between uh, the morning and the afternoon, that was down to 3,000, and we can bring this down to 2,000, so we will start losing more and more blocks faster and faster as we get down to earlier in the day, so we just lost two right there, we could go to 500, which is only half, uh, which we were doing uh, steps of um, 1,000 before, I mean, if we go all the way down to set time zero, whoop, uh, we're, we're over here, and it's starting to get pretty dark. So we're going to go ahead and set that back up to high noon, and that was at 6,000. There we go, and it's all the way up. Now, what could you use this daylight sensor for? Uh, well, other than uh, since it's daylight, it's really not good for anything, because if we go ahead and set this back down very far, actually, let's set the time... Um, for night, time set night, uh, you can see that da, 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 um, there's very few um, right here. The sun is still maybe visible. Let's let's go ahead and set that to um, 18,000. There we go. So now there's absolutely no sun to be seen. Um, this will not detect torchlight. It'll only detect sunlight. Uh, so, uh, that is useful in knowing that you can light up around it, and uh, the only thing that's ever going to mess with the daylight sensor is the daylight itself. Now, uh, this daylight sensor was added in 1.5, but there is a new function with it. Boop! Look at that. You can basically turn off the daylight sensor. But, it's one step cooler, because not only does it change the colors to a really neat pattern, Part of me wants to uh, make this like some sort of a, uh, look at that, wait, no, there, yeah, it'd be a cool floor, basically, so that's all I'm saying here, um, but now it is a nighttime sensor, so if we sent the time back to uh, 18,000, bam, here we go, it used to be that you'd have to invert the signal from the daylight sensor to be able to do this, but now with the nighttime sensor, you get everything you ever wanted because you can tell exactly when the moon is at the highest point, which is something you couldn't do with just the inverted daylight sensor. It may be simpler for you uh, to invert it or if you want to see how you invert it, it's very simple. Let's go ahead and give us some light here. 
inverting a signal is just as simple as it has always been. All you have to do is put down a block uh, with the redstone pointing into the block and then a torch on top of that. So the torch will be turned off when there is a redstone signal applied. And if we just go ahead and turn that off, uh, the torch will turn back on if the stick of the block is inside of the block. Of the stick of the torch is inside of the block, I should say. So that is a little bit about daylight sensors. What can you make with these? Well, of course, you can make automatic lights that turn on once it is nighttime. In fact, it is very simple now. Uh, with a redstone lamp and a daylight sensor on top. Turn that to nighttime mode, and whenever it's night, doo -doo -doo -doo, uh, the blocks turn on, which is really, really neat. Very simple and compact now. Um, you could do that. Um, and then there's, of course, other things where you could set up so that uh, maybe once the redstone signal is tripped twice or so, um, that something happens so that means like two days have passed then it could turn on water and auto harvest your potatoes or um maybe every second day the, uh, a door is unlocked or maybe the doors become locked at night so that uh, moms can't get in but during the day uh, all your iron doors are open so you don't have to continuously click through them that sort of stuff is what is possible with daylight sensors another fun thing about the daylight sensor is that it has a really cool texture on top and so you could get like a really neat floor kind of looks like an 80s floor and no one on the, it's it's not it's not normal to use these these sensors for floors you look you, no one else will know on your server i don't know maybe people know anyway if you like this episode give it a like leave a comment down below let me know what you thought and subscribe for future episodes at youtube.com omgcraft see you next time on omgcraft bye